Hi, my name's Mark. I'm from G-Code Tutor. And I'm here today with Practical Machinist to talk a little bit about basic movements of our CNC machine using G-Code. So this one here we're going to take a look at first. This is G00, our rapid travel command. Now when we're stating G00, we don't need to give a feed rate. The machine will already move as fast as it possibly can, which is set in the parameters. So when the machine reads G00, it's going to accelerate to its top speed and move the axis from point A to point B in a straight line, as fast as it possibly can. So in this example here, we're moving minus 100 millimeters in X. So it'd be moving our cutter to the left if we're looking at the front of the datum. And we don't need any other codes, just the simple line will move our cutter in that direction. And this works very similar to our G01. This is our linear interpolation move. Now that sounds quite wordy, but it basically means a straight line movement with a feed rate. So this is what we use when we're removing the material, when we're cutting. So G01, X minus 100, we'll still move our cutter to the left by 100 millimeters, but we have to designate a feed rate when working with G01. So I've given it a feed rate of 100 millimeters per minute right here with an F value. So we spoke about moving the cutter using the X dimension there. So if we look into a little bit more detail, what we're using here is a Cartesian coordinate system to position our cutter in the 3D environment of the machine. Now the Cartesian coordinate system we've learned back at school. This is where we plot a graph along the X and Y axes and CNC machines work exactly the same way. If we're looking down onto the table of the machine or if we're on horizontal milling machine, for example, we'd be looking sideways into the axes and our center point of our cross here is, the, is where the cutter is. To move to the left, we would be in an X minus position and to move up, we would be in a Y plus position and so on. And we can visualize that by plotting a graph. And as we plot, we can see our X and Y coordinates are uh, written by the side of each plot that we point on our coordinate graph here. Now this is exactly the same way as we move a cut around inside our machine. So let's have a look at a G-code program. Okay, so let's take a look at a very basic part, this rectangle. Now over in the bottom left corner there, you can see we have this little round symbol. Well, that's our datum symbol. And we also had it in the center of our crosshairs when we spoke about our uh, Cartesian coordinate system. So our datum position is where we're gonna set our X zero, Y zero. This is where all our dimensions will come from. The same as the center of our crosshairs, it would be our X zero, Y zero position. So if we're working in absolute, which means all our dimensions come from this datum, we can imagine our crosshair over the top of this datum and that's the directions we'll be moving our cutter. So let's write some code. So this first line here, we're stating G00 that we spoke about just now, our rapid travel command. So this is gonna move our cutter to the position as fast as it possibly can as designated by the parameters. So after G00, we're given an X and Y position. Now X0, Y0, this is our position of our datum, which we previously set. Now, as you can probably tell from this program, this is not a complete program. We are just looking at the code we need to move the cutter around so we can discuss that. We are missing out things like tool calls, uh, cutter compensation, safety lines, etc., etc. But we're just looking at our basic movements here. Now with our cutter in position, with it in the zero, zero position, we can now bring it down in Z to start taking a cut. So I'm going to assume our datum is also at the top plane of our component. So our top face would be zero, and if we go in below that face with our cutter, we'll be in a minus figure. So Z minus 10 will rapid the cutter down 10 millimeters uh, in Z axis. Now, we could put G00 again on this line, but we don't need to because it's still active from the line above. So once we've stated G00, or indeed G01, we don't need to state it again. The machine assumes that's its state until we tell it otherwise. So we don't need to state G00 again. It still assumes we're in rapid mode and it would rapid the cutter down 10 millimeters. And I'm finishing this line here with an MO8, and that just turns the coolant on. MO8 seems to be the standard coolant on M code. It does change from machine to machine, but it's the standard. So now that we've finished our rapid movements and we're ready to start cutting material, we switch over to G01, our linear interpolation move. So now we can cut in a straight line. 
So why 160 millimeters in the plus direction would move our cutter up 160 millimeters along the top of our rectangle. And because we're using Geo1 now, we've also got to give a feed rate. So I've given it a feed rate here of 100 millimeters per minute, but this is just a number off the top of my head. I've not calculated any feed rates because I haven't stated what cutter we're using, what diameter we're using, what material we're using, etc. So we can't properly get a good idea of what feed rate is necessary at the moment. So I've just given it a figure of 100 millimeters for a feed rate. So our next move, I wish to take a cut along this top plane here and we're using along the X axis. So we move along the X axis in a plus direction by 200 millimeters. And if you remember our Cartesian coordinate system graph, our X plus would be in this direction. So X 200 plus, we move our cutter to the right by 200 millimeters. And we don't need to state GO1 again, because it's still active from the line above. Likewise, we don't need to state our feed rate, because that's still active also. Now to move our cutter back down to the same plane as our datum, we would just state Y0. So we know our datum position is Y0.0. .0. So saying Y0 will bring our cutter down in line with that. And again, we don't need to state GO1 or a feed rate. To complete our shape and move the cutter back to its initial start position, we need to move to the left by 200 millimeters. Now, because we're in absolute, we just need to give the dimensions of the datum and not the distance we are moving. If we were stating the distance we're moving, we'd be using incremental, but that's a lesson for a different day. So by stating X 0.0, we move the cutter back to our datum position, finishing off our rectangle. So now we've finished cutting, we need to move our cutter away from the material and get it clear from the job. So we switch over back into G00 to move our cutter in a rapid way. And I'm stating Z50 millimeters here. So using a rapid movement, we're moving our cutter 50 millimeters above the top plane of the components. Now remember, we set our datum Z0 on the top plane, so it'd be 50 millimeters above that. Now if this was going into the table, we'd use a minus value here, of course. Now MO9, we finish off this line with, this turns off our coolant. Because we turned it off with MO8 on the second line, this line we now turn it off. So the coolant's not splashing on the screen doors as we're wrapping in our cutter back to its tool change position. So that's a very basic look at our basic movements, I'm doing the most simplest shape we possibly can do on a CNC machine, just with straight line movements. And that's how G01 and G00 work together to be able to produce our parts for us. Now there's a lot more involved in this. There's a lot of this program I have omitted, so it's not a complete program, but it does explain how our basic movements work. Now, if you want to know a lot more about this and learn this subject completely, I have a course called the Foundation to G-Code Programming over on my website that teaches this in a lot, a lot more detail than I've covered briefly here. So that just about wraps up our introduction to basic movements. My name's Mark and thank you for listening.